I would like to say something about my impression so far. Uh, I think the Occupy movement has been a huge success. Beijing definitely hear their voice. Don't tell me they didn't hear their, the voice of Hong Kong people, and they hear it. And how they respond is another subject. And second, and more importantly, is Hong Kong people hear their own voice. This is very important for social movements, and usually we tend to wish other people, particularly the government, to hear our voice. But the more important is that we hear our own voice, and Hong Kong people has ne never before made that strong statement with their own action, but for their own business, for this own very city. Yeah, we know that every year you have June 4th, a candle vigil. It's for Beijing, it's for what happened in 1989, it's for, yeah, it's our country, but it's still, there's a layer that the other group of people sacrifice, and you know, we pay you know, attention, we pay tribute to support, to commemorate it. But this time it's our own business. So this voice is being made by Hong Kong people and heard by Hong Kong people. Although there are clashes and differences, that's to me, it's okay. People have different opinions and people have different behavior, right? There are some people being nasty, fine. Being violent, fine. But it's a part of the voice. The other reason that I think this movement has been really, really successful is the first time since even far before 1997 that Hong Kong people no longer rely upon what the American president said about Hong Kong, not the British Queen or Prime Minister said about Hong Kong, not running around to the U.S. Congress, not running around to British uh, Parliament, but we sit in Hong Kong, we sit in Admiralty, and we are determined in our demand. So that's a, a very, very strong and, and a clear message to ourselves and to the, the, the international community too. So that's, um, as a Hong Konger, I feel really proud of that. <laughs> and as a Chinese living in Hong Kong, working on the mainland, the workers' issue, and I found it's uh, very, very encouraging. So what ideas do you have for engaging ordinary citizens who really aren't sure but feel they don't like the impact on their life? You know, you have to let people see the benefit. I may be a bit crazy and dramatic. One is your willingness to compromise, not holding yourself politically correct, morally high, in the opposition with the dictatorship Chinese regime. That wouldn't make anyone to see your sincerity and you are fighting for their interests and you are actually keeping your chain high for the sake of it you don't want to lose face. That can be their suspicious. That's why they don't trust you. And therefore, willing, show your willingness to compromise, being reasonable, recognize even the opposition's, the government's uh, effort in this. That, I would say, you make these taxi drivers able to say, oh, I see these reasonable guys, and they are really trying their best to make this progress, and then I may, I respect these guys, and then I may sacrifice a little bit more. And secondly, and even more dramatic, more kind of a crazy, hey, make a proposal to the Hong Kong, what, Environmental Protection Department, or whatever it is, and the, 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 the Transportation Department, recommend in the future from uh, Mong Kok or from Prince Edward to to Chim Sha Chui. It will be uh, a tram road, no more buses, tram road. Every 300 meters you have a stop and on the side you have bikes. You, people walk there and that will make these uh, small shop business owners to see the longer term future. Hey, nice! If this whole street become 
you know, people can walk, can be on their bike, can be on the tram, no pollution, no these noisy buses, and no the smelly gas. And in five years, wow, it can be a result of this uh, Occupy movement. And, and I, every, I have more business. And think about that. I mean, be more creative, not only sticking with <laughs> the few uh, demands that began with. And there are many things. You know, if you walk in Hong Kong, if you walk in Amherst, you see many creative things. And be creative. That's what the social movements need to be. I'm not trying to, you know, be as the old man from 1989, try to give some wise kind of suggestions. But there are solutions. And for example, instead of others, within the framework, not making the, 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 the National People's Congress losing faith and, and compromise a point. Why not? Make this recommendation. It, it wouldn't make you lose faith, but gain more respect. What is that? Okay, 1,200 nomination committee. These people, right? And remember, there are 70 people among these 1,200. They are very important 70 people, the logical members. They are legitimately recognized by the National People's Framework. You can recommend one thing like this. Take these 70 important people out from this 100, 2000. Get another, whoever the 70 in. Make up your 1,200. These 70 people are elected by Hong Kong people now. And they have much more credit than those 1,200. And give them equal credit as if you want to run for the election, you can either get nomination from the 1,200 or you get more than 35 these 70. They are reasonable people. You have to trust them. So you get either of them, you can be a candidate. So that will save Beijing's face, is within this framework. No new people coming in, but just to create another path. So why not? There are many others. I'm just saying one. There are many other possibilities within the framework. But again, as a labor guy, what we believe bargain and win-win solution. We don't believe in one side complete winning, the other side completing, uh, completely losing. So this is uh, the, the mentality. I would say fundamental change needed.